welcome everyone today's topic is quality control in microbiology so let's get started and after completing today's presentation you will be able to define and briefly summarize the quality terms you will know the difference between the validation and the verification of different methods and you will know the QC which is run in uh, my lab uh, actually the difference between IQCP and non IQCP so I will talk about the media stains reagents and equipments as well as AST so there are a lot of definitions about quality control you will find in the literature but basically what is quality control is a system that detects and corrects analytical errors by establishing the performance limits the the goal is to detect significant errors rapidly and identify the sources of error and report out quality results in a timely manner and the Q quality control should be cost effective and simple to use it should not be a very expensive thing or should not be very complex we have to make things simple and easy for the end user an overall management plan which guarantees the integrity of the data that is our quality assurance so as in terms of who that the right result at the right time for the on the right specimen from the right patient as well as using the correct reference data and the right price these all things combined makes a good quality assurance system that makes sure that the client the patients and the physicians gets accurate results so our uh, our product what is our product the labs product are its results the results matter to the physicians and to the patients so the correct and accurate results are the quality product of our, of any lab and it helps tremendously in proper diagnosis of disease and it adds very well to the reputation of the lab as well as the technologists working in the lab and it's a great motivation factor for the staff as well as it fulfills the accreditation requirements now the quality needs to be improved once you have a quality control and a quality assurance system you need to make sure that the things go forward so in order to improve your quality you need to work on your pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical areas and it's like a PDCA cycle that is a continuous improvement that you plan, you do, you check, you act and you back to planning of the next level of improvement and you perform the next level of improvement again. So some of the performance indicators which help really to improve the quality like in terms of pre-analytic, we can do the contamination of blood cultures. So this is a very good indicator which reflects the pre-analytical phase of the blood culture system. That how well your phlebotomist or your nursing staff is performing the blood collection. How well the skin has been decontaminated or not. For analytic phase, you can choose uh, any of the indicators. Like a very simple one is the TAT monitoring. If your TAT is within the limits. Your cultures, your gram chains, your results are reporting within the TAT limits. It means that you are doing an excellent job. And for the post analytical, we can uh, have different scenarios. One of the example is to choose for the critical result reporting. That once you have a result in your hand, how well do you report that to the physician? And in how much time does it take? This is a good post analytic uh, indicator that can be used in any lab. Every lab has a quality management system and this is the responsibility of the lab director to have a good QMS and the QMS should have quality objectives well defined. There should be a quality manual and the organizational structure and the responsibilities should be very well written and described. Everyone should know what he or she is supposed to do in the lab and what he or she is responsible for the data management the lab results the quality reports 
the other documentation, the meeting minutes, everything, the internal policies, the procedures, these all should be very well managed and should be controlled. And then the processes needs to be defined. And these processes are not only pre-analytical, analytical and post-analytical, but also include purchasing, which is an integral part of any lab. So any process which is being dealt in the lab should be there in the QMS and the product quality leading to the customer satisfaction is the end result of a good quality management system. And as we talked about the continuous improvement before also that there have to be some corrective actions and preventive actions to improve the quality and a good document control is necessary for any lab to manage its uh, policies and procedures. Moving on to the validation and verification in the in the lab and uh, we are talking about with the special emphasis on to the microbiology lab so if we talk about the validation it is a confirmation by examination and the provision of objective evidence that the particular requirements for a specific intended use are fulfilled so it means that the standard methods when we use them outside their intended scope in the lab we have to do a validation on them or if a lab develops its own method that is also a non-standard method so then again we need to do a complete validation while on the other hand for verification it is the confirmation that the method is capable to perform as intended so we need to just validate the manufacturer claims in the lab that is called the verification process and this is what most of the labs do and the fully validated standard methods like the ones which are approved by FDA or local uh, bodies they fall in this category and the lab just needs to do a verification study so now let's have an example of verification of a new AST method suppose if there is a new analyzer in the lab which can perform AST or you are changing from Kirby bar to e-test or from e-test to Kirby bar for any of these you need to do a verification study the verification study will include accuracy and in in the accuracy you will do the comparison study between the reference method and the new system so in the accuracy actually we are looking for the essential agreement which is the agreement of MIC to the MIC if the if the MIC to MIC difference is within plus minus one doubling dilution then it's acceptable and to pass the verification study the 90 percent or more MICs should be in agreement after that we move on to the categorical agreement uh, categorical agreement is actually the agreement between the interpretation of the results like susceptible or intermediate or resistant or susceptible dose dependent whatever that your lab is using the interpretation you have to see the results and look for minor errors which are a susceptible result versus an intermediate or intermediate result versus an resistant result these are minor errors if these are minor errors are 10 percent or less it's acceptable in the major error susceptible from the reference method versus the resistant of the new system so it means that your old system gives susceptible and while your new system reports resistant to that drug so this is a major error it means that you will be reporting falsely resistant to the clinician to the patient and that suitable antibiotic may not be used in that case so only three percent or less is allowed the major error and the very major error and the very major error when the resistance of reference method versus the sensitive of new system so it means that the drug is reported falsely susceptible by the new system so this is a very serious error very major error and if reported to the clinician it may result in treatment failure and there can be serious consequences so only 1.5 percent or less is allowed then we need to involve the precision studies uh, whereby we run replicates of same microorganism by different techs on different days this is to make sure that changing the tech or across different days your lab is capable to reproduce the same result again and again so the data is to be analyzed for across the run precision as well as within the run precision 
okay then all the labs are actually well aware of iqcp now it's quite an old thing it started in uh, back in 2016 so now we are in 2022 so basically either you follow the college of american pathologists default qc guidelines or you implement an iqcp so let's take an example of direct antigen tests like uh, for example the microbiology lab they do the rapid throat swab they do like stool for h pylori or stool for occult blood these direct antigen tests if you follow the cap default you need to run a positive and a negative control on each day of patient testing while if we implement an iqcp in the lab which is of course optional but saves a lot of uh, money as well as a lot of effort from the lab staff then we can just do the qc on every new lot or shipment only after that just monitor the internal control similarly the molecular based tests like pcrs in the lab again by cap default you have to run positive and negative controls on each day of testing while after implementing the iqcp only the qc can be restricted to only performing when receiving a new lot or shipment and for culture media the default qc from the cap is to do the qc for all media physical inspection and the sterility of the media the ability to support growth select or inhibit the specific organisms and produce the intended biochemical response while in the iqcp we have to divide media into two categories exempt and non exempt exempt media requires only physical inspection while the non exempt media we need to do all the qc including physical sterility ability to support growth select or inhibit specific organisms and produce the expected biochemical reactions so in the physical inspection what we do is we look for thickness color bubbles pits moisture content expiry date while in case of non exam media we do the physical inspection as well as microbiological inspection in the microbiological inspection we look for uh, the the type of media and we try to test it for that purpose like if it was a selective media is it able to select that organism and inhibit the others if it was a differential media is it giving the differential response or not and the sterility check that at least 5% of the received lot should be incubated and any growth indicates a contamination so what are the non exam media the mullerington plain as well as its 5% sheep blood agar chocolate and thyr martin campylobacter agar mcconkey with sorbitol and todavit broth as well as any media with two or more substrates that are used for bacterial identification so that means all the chromagers as well as the biochemicals like tsi triple sugar iron are included in the non exempt media list then we move on to the identification systems most of the labs they have uh, automated systems now in the lab for identification so following the cap default we have to run a positive and negative reactivity of each substrate for each new lot and shipment for example id system called vitec the id card for gram positives it has let's say around 30 substrates so for each of those substrates you need to run a positive and negative control on every new lot and shipment this is a requirement so if we move on to the manufacturer recommendation they have actually recommended nine strains to be run on the gram negative or the gram positive identification card from the vitec so those nine strains actually cover all of these positive and negative reactions for all the substrates and maintaining those nine strains and running for each new lot and shipment actually it's uh it's quite expensive for the lab as well as very laborious for the tech working on the bench while if you implement the iqcp you just need to run a streamlined qc that is only two strains for gn and two strains for gp card so these two the streamlined qc isolates actually give you the most key reactions positive and negative so that you can accept the lot for for the testing and in the antimicrobial sensitivity testing iqcp the cap default says that every day you do any susceptibility testing in the lab you should do appropriate organisms for qc while in the iqcp we can reduce this frequency to 
weekly most of the labs do it weekly so the ATCC strains mostly used in uh, most of the labs are Staph aureus the first one is MRSA the second one MSSA and then D test positive and negative strain of Staph aureus and then we have Enterococcus faecalis E. coli E. coli beta lactamase positive Pseudomonas, Kinepsial anemone for ESPL. Then there are some tests which do not require any IQCP. So you have to follow the CAP default for these tests, like for gram stain. You have to do the weekly QC. If the tech is performing gram stain on daily basis, like if tech A works on a wound bench and he is performing gram stain daily for his specimens, he should do QC on weekly basis only. While if a lab or a person who performs Gramsin very infrequently, he should do the QC every time he uses the gram stain. Methylene blue and trichrome stain are monthly. Zedin stain is each day of use, while the fluorescent stains each time of use. Then there are certain reagents whereby we need to run the positive and negative controls for each new lot and shipment, like catalase, coagulase, oxidase, optocin. XV and XV factors and the streptococcal grouping antigens and strains all these things need actually just a positive and negative control only upon the new lot and shipment arrival. The beta lactamase it requires positive and negative QC on each day of patient testing and for antisera for salmonella shigella etc we have to run the positive and negative QC at the arrival as well as every six months thereon. Then moving on to the quality control of equipment, there are equipments for which we need to maintain a specific temperature. So there should be temperature checks for incubators, refrigerators, freezers. Incubators, we need to make sure that the carbon dioxide levels are checked periodically. For the centrifuges, we need to check their performance every six months. The anaerobic jars, every time that we are going to use, we need to make sure that the anaerobic jars have a proper ring and sealing system as well as we need to do the quality control for anaerobic organisms so that they grow or we can use a chemical indicator which can tell us if the anaerobic uh, conditions were met during the incubation. For biosafety cabinets, this needs to be tested and certified every six months. So AST quality control in most of the labs is run weekly but before you run the weekly QC, you need to perform QC for 20 or 30 consecutive days. If there is more than 1 out of 20 or more than 3 out of 30 results are out, you need to continue daily QC. It reflects that there is a problem in the system, whether your media or your ATCC isolate or your AST system, there is something wrong. So you need to keep performing the daily QC until you find the root cause and you remove it. If all the results are within the range or only 1 out of 20 or 3 out of 30 were out, this is acceptable QC and we can shift to the weekly QC. What if a weekly QC fails? We just need to repeat the testing of that isolate. If the failure persists, then we need to switch to daily QC, find out the error, find out the root cause, remove it and then switch to weekly QC uh, after fixing the error. So instead of running for 20 consecutive or 30 consecutive days, what we can do, we can choose a 15 replicates method where we can test three replicates of each QC strain for five consecutive days using individual inoculum and preferably different texts. So if all 15 are passed or only one is out, we can accept the results. It's a pass and we can move on to the weekly QC after that. However, if two or three are out from the 15, we need to repeat 15 more replicates. And if out of 30 is 2 or 3 out, it's a pass again. We can return to the weekly QC. However, if there is 4 or more out of 30, the, it means that the ver verification has failed and we need to start over again. Similarly, if the 4 was failed on the first time from the 15, we need to start again. We, we don't need to count again um, uh, until 30. Thank you for your time. I'll be uploading videos regarding microbiology and if you have any questions regarding quality control, microbiology lab, the cap, anything, don't hesitate to ask me. I'll be glad to answer. Have a nice day.